Well, welcome back to Tea Time. That's right, Miss Liz is back and it is evening tea time. And I have a returning guest from season three and four. And now she's here for season five. So I can't wait to get Diane back in here. And we're going to talk about some of her new books and all of that good stuff and humanitarian uh, missions and all of the good things that we usually talk about. And if you haven't seen Diane's previous Tea Times, you can check those out on Miss Liz's YouTube channel where I'm gonna swing you over to right now. Ring that little doorbell and you can watch all of these Tea Times at any time in your home, in your car, at an event, um, spread the word. And if a Tea Time resonates with you, share it with your fa friends, family, loved ones, coworkers, all of that good stuff, because that's what Miss Liz does. She loves sharing and sharing is caring and caring is healing. So. A little bit about Miss Liz. We're going to do a disclaimer and then we're going to do a bio and we're going to get Diane in here. And we're going to spill an incredible tea. Tonight's tea is time, entertaining, and awareness. So we'll be talking about those three words with Diane a little bit in the show. So disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time live show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forth dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. And the facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that this show is engaging in discussions, forms only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in tonight's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect that and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all Tea Time shows are hosted on a Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you see a Tea Time on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's a special surprise or a rescheduled Tea Time. So now a little bit about my guest. Well, she's here for the third time, and she was also at the reunion show, which will be happening in December. So stay tuned for that, guys. Diane Foyboyne is a former classroom educator and award-winning international author. Diane writes children's books and young and young adult historical fiction. Diane's books inspire her readers to be kind, love themselves, and embrace imagination. You can find all of her books on Amazon, BNN, and you may order at your favorite bookstores. Diane does speaking engagements, signing, and author visitations. Her creative flair en encompasses the performing arts and performing in musical theater productions in Dubai, produced by popular productions out of England. Diana enjoys making guest appearance on various live streaming shows and is an expert correspondent with Dr. Jacqueline on the UK news and culture show for USA Global TV and Radio. Diana is currently serving on the school board for St. Michael's es Espocado Preschool in Austin, Texas. I'll get her to say that school's name because I don't want to dis disrespected so let me get her in here and let's share some tea tonight with all of you guys welcome <laughs> diane oh, it's so great to be here. <laughs> so it's episcopal saint michael's episcopal school I, I i swear my tongue like i'm just like what what's that saying <laughs> trust me it's a it's a hard word <laughs> it is, i think it's a spanish word is it i i think it's english because it comes out of uh, the anglican church in um, England, 
But then after the United States, well, we weren't the United States then, but after we had our big war for independence, um, the ones here, uh, the Patriots said, we're going to be called Episcopal. So who knows where it came from, <laughs> but it's an Anglican church. <laughs> you know, if I try to see, even try to say that one time, I think I would, and my tongue would just slip. <laughs> <laughs> I have words like that too. So, <laughs> so Diane, for anybody who hasn't seen season three and four, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. So who were you as a little girl and who are you now? <laughs> Wow, I lived a long life. It might take a long time. <laughs> uh, you know, I grew up um, like most Americans in a small town with the, uh, the most loving parents. I was very blessed, uh, hardworking people. And I have five brothers and I'm right in the middle, the only girl. So the princess of the family, though, you wouldn't think it because in those days, um, all you listeners, uh, you know, you had there wasn't uh, wash and wear clothes. You had to iron everything, including your the sheets and the towels and everything. So my brothers were like, are you going to get my jeans washed? I mean, dried and <laughs> pressed before school? <laughs> so, anyway, oh, poor Diane. No, but um, it was really fun growing up. And then... Um, you know, I went off to school, but I was always on stage. I was on stage since I was 10 years old, and I, I absolutely love the stage. That's an, a form of storytelling, which, which really led me to everything that I do now. And even when I became, um, I graduated from George Mason in Virginia, and um, when I became a teacher, I was still always telling stories because it was a wonderful way to bring the kids together, even if they were in eighth grade. It was like, let's let's calm down. I know you had a really hard test, but let me tell you about one of my tests and how I can relate and blah, blah, blah. And before you know it, everybody was ready to work and, and get busy. So I'm all about trying to have people love themselves and believe they can do it, but know that you have to work together and to make it happen. Well, and storytelling does bring people together, right? Mm -hmm. Look at it brought us together. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and the perfect name. I love, I've always loved the name Tea Time. It automatically just calms your soul and relax. And it's very clever what you came up with. <laughs> well, I was given it at the age of four. So my Oma has a lot to do with that. So uh -huh. it was a time of reflecting, recharging, and releasing, right? And just so serving see. serving life tea, right? Because mm -hmm. life is hard, and but we have some incredible people like you out there that is making it a little easier through your books and through your writing and your acting and all of that stuff, right? Thank you. You're so sweet to say. I hope so. You know, I always think that, um, no, I really believe this, that I thank God every morning that I wake up that I got to open my eyes because somebody else didn't get to. So if I'm blessed enough to be able to open my eyes, I ask the Lord, what can I do to make you smile today and bring happiness and joy to someone? I don't necessarily need to see it, but I hope you see it because I want to share the light. So that's who I am. So Diane, I have a question for you. You said you started being on stage at the age of 10. So how was that for you? It was so exciting. It was, I didn't know what I got myself into, but I knew I loved to perform, uh, you know, with all my friends and everything. And um, so at school, um, the teachers decided that there was going to be a talent show. And I was in fourth grade and I went to a Catholic school. And so my friends, they were like, let's become the singing nuns and we'll do a pantomime. And I don't know if you know the singing nuns, but cause you're very young, uh, but they were out of France and they sang Dominique. Dominique, And so we all dressed up like little nuns and we pantomimed it. And I just remember when we finished the smiles and the clapping and I was like, this brought so much joy that after that, I was I was like, I got to keep doing this because it brought joy. So have um, you done a lot of musicals? Yes. Um, you know, well, a funny story. In fifth grade, when I transferred to public school, they wouldn't let me be in the choir. I had to beg. And that's a story all by itself, which will be in a children's book one day. And um, and then but 
All through junior high and high school, I was always, you know, singing and in the choir and trying out, um, you know, for awards and stuff. And and then I had the most amazing high school um, theater teacher, Mrs. Um, Angelo, and God bless her soul, she just passed and was buried on Saturday. But she was a powerful influence in my life. And though I had no leading part, which I didn't deserve, <laughs> I was not the person that needed to have those parts. But she taught us that <clears throat> no, even if you're just walking on stage and you have no words, that you're still one of the most important people because you had a part to play. So she always made you feel important. She always um, loved everyone. And she, she taught us more than just acting. She taught us about life, the ups and downs and how to be strong. And I loved that about theater too. So anyway, I was in all, you know, all four musicals in high school and then in college, um, I was in choir. I didn't do theater or anything, but Miss Angela taught me everything. So I was always trying out for community theater and, uh, you know, ended up with some parts and, and uh, the, a local community theater in Round Rock at the time, Texas. And then when I was in the Philippines, I made it into a professional musical, Pippin, and then um, musicals with um, for 14 years um, in uh, Dubai. So that's pretty cool, right? Absolutely. I think it's amazing. And, and see, you already have future projects on the go. You're already <laughs> talking about putting it in the Suez story one day. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about some of the children's books, and then we'll get into the young uh, youth books that we'll be talking about tonight, but some of the children's books that you've written, Diane. Sure. So my tagline is to embrace imagination. And so my children's books are all about, um, the theme could be kindness. It could be peace to believe in yourself and um, embrace imagination. So for instance, a time to fly is about a little bird who didn't want to fly. And, and the mom's like, you can do it. And so there's this really sweet way that the mom gets the child or the bird, but you can see yourself in it. And before you know it, the little bird is taking off. And uh, that is to inspire kids to know that, yeah, it might be kind of scared to take those little steps, but just do one step at a time. And before you know it, you'll fly too. And then um, there's Charlie and the tire swing, and that brings in a lot of um, generations because it's real big to me and important family history. Um, I just love family history. I think so. that's the book I got, Charlie. And the yeah, family. I think so too. I, I think so, yeah, because I'm trying to remember. I have so many books <laughs> from all of my different guests, but I, Charlie and the tire swing rings a bell. Well, good. Um, I love Charlie. And there's going to be more stories coming out, but the long and the short of it is he's an embracing imagination on his tire swing and you never know what he's going to be that day. And yes. then anyway, I could go on and on because I have like 11 books, but again, it, they're all wrapped up in the kindness and love. And I'll tell you one more quick thing so you can have a moment to ask me questions. So um, we'll be making a big announcement soon, but um, Boomer, as you know, the curious bunny, did really well. So thank you everyone who's purchased Boomer. So it's turning into a series and a big announcement will be coming out real soon about Boomer the Curious Bunny. Um, and I, I'm just over the moon about it. I remember Boomer now. I remember <laughs> Charlie from I think season three and then yep. season four we did Boomer. That's yeah, right. now it's starting to ring a bell. I was like, yeah, hey, yeah. I can't wait for good news. I always love good news, guys. Uh, I like to get it out there as well. So don't forget to give me that information. Uh, we'll do. So tonight, tonight, I want to talk about your book, and it's called Ruby Takes Chicago. Oh yes, yeah. So, what's that book about? Because I was surprised when I got that from Mickey. I was just like, oh, oh, <laughs> this is different. <laughs> yeah. That this is the sequel to Rise, A Girl's Struggle for More, Ruby, who, um, you know, she ran away. To, it's based on a true story of my grandmother, just to say that for you. And um, and that book did really well, too. And the purpose of that book is to go after your dreams, no matter how many, how long it takes. But you can do it. 
And um, so that book did really well. So my publisher is like, you're going to have to do a follow up. I told you that was going to happen. I'm like, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, Ruby Takes Chicago is where Ruby, her parents are like, okay, this small town's not cutting it for you. You're going to have to go to a big town in Chicago. So they give her the bus there and, and connect her with the family that they know there. And uh, she, <laughs> she doesn't have a job or anything, but she is going to find it. So a lot of humorous things happen and she becomes of age in that story as well. So there's a lot of, um, you know, heartbreak and love and heartbreak and et cetera. And, uh, and, you know, job looking for him. But one funny thing that I love to say is that we, we've seen um, movies where operators go and they put those little things in, you know, and don't know what they're doing. Well, that really does happen because my grandma was one of them. You know, in the early uh, 20, 1920s, uh, you would just see signs outside in the window saying, you know, job, you know, secretary wanted or whatever. And so anyway, she gets hired and she says, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know how to work an operator machine. <laughs> and so she's like putting everything in and the boss is like, I thought you said you knew what you were doing. And, and, my, and my grandma was telling me the story and I looked, she says, I looked at her and I said, just give me 15 more minutes. I'll have it down. <laughs> Well, at least she at least she tried, right? Right, and she got to keep the job because she got it down. He was so impressed with her um, wanting it so badly and willing to put herself out there that he goes, "Okay, I'm keeping you." <laughs> so, was that your grandma's name, Ruby? Yeah, that was her name, Ruby. So, uh, yeah, yeah, when I seen the when I seen the cover of that book, I was like, "Oh." I like this, the vintage, the design of the book. Like, I don't know who did the design of the book, but it was uh, it, really nice, re really different because I'm so used to the children's books, right? And then I yeah, seen this yeah. and I was like, oh, well, look at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was an OC publishing. So I have uh, three publishers now. And so that my way, my A book was with OC publishing. And yeah, they did a fantastic job with the covers on both books very vintage and and uh, on both books the pictures are actually my grandmother oh so that's really her that's really ruby and so that's how she, in ruby takes chicago that's how she looked in the 1920s well she was beautiful because i i loved a old look the vintage look mm -hmm. uh, yeah i was just like well i was blown away by that and i've actually worked with oc publishing as well uh they've worked with me as well incredible and does incredible work as well he does, uh, he does. yeah Sorry. It, it, it's a it's a small world right like mm -hmm. it's, a small it's a, world. amazing so how long did that book take you to write well the first one took almost five years oh because um, <laughs> there was so much studying in history that i wanted to make sure that i got it right and uh, luckily i had my mom uh with me uh, because she's passed. So that's why I say it like that. Um, and then, of course, I have my grandmother's stories and my mother helped feed in pieces that, you know, your grandmother wouldn't say to your young grandmother. Right? <laughs> um, but this book only took about two years because I had already done so much history. So in this particular book, I really needed to study Chicago. I needed to study the, the voice and the way things worked. Uh, back in the 1920s and um, and the politics, you know, with uh, with uh, the dry, you know, you, you know, they had speakeasies because you couldn't drink. Right. Yeah. Prohibition. I was losing my word for a minute. Prohibition. And so you know, um, I knew where my grandmother, uh, what speakeasies she would go into and so forth because she loved to dance. So. Um, that's another part that's really fun in that um, book as well is how the women uh, pretended to be one way and then they would get into the speakeasies <laughs> because they had to. It's the only way to survive, right? Yeah. And, and also, I think what's interesting about that time period is 
we we see a lot of movies where it's all glitz and glamour, but that's not the reality for the whole United States. Yeah. People, there were a lot of people starving to death in the night, you know, the late 1920s, right? Because we were moving into um, the depression time. And then we had that prohibition. And people think, oh, women are starting to work. But even a big town like Chicago, the women who were willing to work like my grandmother, they were looked down upon and they were looked at as hussies because they were wanting to step out of the house and not follow everything that a man said you had to do. So she was really ahead of her time. But also I want young people to realize life for women was not always easy compared yeah. to today. So. Well, I got a lot of stories like from my grandma as well, because she was born in 1926 and, okay. and she passed when she was 97 last year in November. And like she said, she's seen enough, you mm -hmm. know, like they, they did see a lot they did. In, in the time. Right. And it was hard for women and that, uh, you know, they were dressed up fancy. They had the design, they had a really good wardrobe, uh, but they were making a lot of their car uh, their outfits and that as well. With Absolutely. Yeah. The leftover materials and curtains and, and like they were making outfits out of a lot of leftovers. Right. And during the depression age, a lot of people, parents or moms, I should say, were making um, dresses for their kids out of potato sacks. So. Yeah, I yeah. heard that. Yeah. Yeah. My well, because they would, they would have images on the potato sack bags, right? Yes. They would have pictures in that. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, that's an interesting story, even how the potato companies realized it and started making their sacks even prettier for <laughs> the clothing yeah. to happen, which I thought was kind of nice of them. It was, right? Yeah. So Diane, did you get any uh, hand, uh, like any outfits from your grandmother when she passed or? Not when, not when she passed, but um, I clearly remember playing with, in the cover of Ruby Takes Chicago, it's a picture of my, not Chicago, I'm sorry, rise a girl struggle for more my grandmother is 16 with that picture and she has a comb in her hair because it was a big deal when you turn 16 you get to wear your hair up because you're a grown woman and so i clearly remember playing with that beautiful comb and i now i'm like mom why did grandmother ever let me touch that comb i would love to have it today but um she yeah now, most of her clothes from the 1920s would not have fit her in 2020. <laughs> she enjoyed wow. it. And, we're, and, we're, and we're putting so much history out there, right? Because for all the yeah. listeners, like only 16 and you could put your hair up. So before that, you weren't, weren't allowed to put your hair up? Right. Well, actually, I'll back up a little bit. It depends. Um, when you're when you start your period or a, a young boy turns into quote a man, there was no such thing. You were either a child or you were an adult. Teenagers did not happen. That word did not become a daily vocabulary word to the 1950s. But we have the people of the 1920s to thank for us moving into that generation. Dating happened for the first time when cars came about. Courting disappeared because of cars. I mean, so much took place with this particular generation. So when you um, turned 16, and clearly you most likely had your period, then you were considered um, mar marriage material, and you could wear your hair up, and that was a big deal. Wow. Wow. I know, crazy, right? And that's also uh, when boys um, made the change in their bodies, they no longer, they didn't have to wear shorts anymore. They got to wear trousers. You didn't wear trousers unless it was winter time or something, but trousers were for young men. <laughs> wow. You know, just going, just going back in history, it, it brings up a lot of memories and a lot of stories, right? The storytelling yes. of... Uh, our grandparents and that. Uh, so Diane, when I seen the title Ruby Takes Chicago, I thought of you 
I thought that was a story about you and Broadway and musicals and, and that. So I was just like, wow, wow, where did she go with this one? Yeah, that'd be amazing. The only time I was ever in Chicago was for teacher conferences. So <laughs> it is a great city. Yeah, it's really, really pretty. I think it's a good title for a good uh, theater, like, you know, in Chicago, like a Broadway show. Like, Ruby yeah, Kings there is Chicago. a Broadway show called Chicago, right? Yeah. It's, it's a fabulous show. So, Richard so Gere. Um, was in the uh, mu in the movie musical of Chicago. I don't know if you saw it, and he d actually did the tap dancing for it. So that was pretty cool. But, yeah, yeah. Because as soon as I seen the title, I was like, I wonder if that's Diane, and she's doing a musical. Like <laughs> that'd be cool. <laughs> so, what age group is uh, the book made for? Excellent question. That was something that um, a little bit of insight. I, I'm I'm old fashioned, so I don't think young people need to be reading about kissing and all this stuff until they graduate from high school. <laughs> and my publisher goes, uh, uh, Diane, I'm sorry, this is not the dark ages. <laughs> We're going to make this for 13 and up. And I'm like, 13? Oh, my goodness. Can't they just hold hands at 13? And she's like, where have you been living? <laughs> I'm old school, too. Like, I'm just like, you're not dating till you're 30. And they're like, and like, you know, my daughter's getting married next month. And she's 32. And I'm just realizing, oh, my goodness, she's not a little girl anymore. She's a grown adult. So, you know, it's hard. It is hard, right? Yeah, it is. But congratulations. That's pretty oh, cool. Well, thank you for that. So I want to get into your tea. The tea that you gave me tonight is time, entertaining, and awareness. So let's talk about those three words. Okay. Um, thank you for telling me that. I sent you those because I had all new ones. So. Oh, well, let me have the new ones. I always love new words. <laughs> um, you know, I actually, I love time. I, I was thinking about at least in the United States, we're getting ready. To, well, we are in the middle of this giant political battle. And, um, and I just want peace and love. And so I thought, you know, T for tolerance, that we need to tolerate other people's opinions. We don't need to name call. We, need, we don't need to be saying, you are so stupid for thinking like that. Even if you think it, you don't need to say it because everyone's entitled to their opinion. So tolerance, right? And, and that works within the classroom too, to be kind to a fellow student, you know, classmate. And E for effort, because it takes a lot of effort to um, be to have tolerance, but we need to try to have that in our daily lives. And then I thought about A for association. Oh, and I nice. thought association because it is a reminder of who we associate with is also a reflection of who we are. And if we really want to keep the light shining inside of us, which I believe we all have, because darkness cannot survive with light. So the more that we can tolerate, the more effort we make into being kind and tolerant towards other and the and to associate with people that are kind and loving and 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 want to do good, that we're just growing the light inside of us, which helps us to grow the light in the world. So that's what I came up with. You know what? I really like that word association because I've never had that word before given to me for an A, but I can also see that it has a lot to do with your life as well. Me because, personally? Yes, you yeah. personally, because of the way that you work with speaking and going into schools, educating the association of gathering, right? And, bringing the, and bringing the awareness. I, and when you said that word, I was just like, oh, I like that word, you know, <laughs> because we don't talk about association very much. We yeah. say it, but we don't talk about it. And I think, I think that's something that we should be bringing to the table a little bit more, right? Thanks. I think so too. You know, I, I really put a lot of thought into it because 
I really love tea time. I love thinking about it. I remember the first time you asked me that, I was like thinking off the top of my head and and uh, and I liked what I said, but I thought over time, I thought, you know, I'm gonna put a lot of thought into this. And that's what I came up with. But I do believe that, you know, the more we associate with people, the more it's, it's, I mean, no one's perfect. I mean, goodness gracious, I've made tons of mistakes in my life, but that's how we grow, right? And, um, but the more we associate with people that, um, who steal, who bully, who do unkind things, who cuss and so forth. And you think, okay, well, I need to be like them because they're so cool. And I, and then you end up becoming that person. And then you discover, I, I don't like who I've become. And you start backing away. And then you work really hard to turning that light once again in, inside of you. And it's hard to take those little steps, but it's worth it because, because you start to grow. And the more, again, you start associating with people like who love to sing and, oh, I used to love to sing. I'm going to be around them, right? Then then all of a sudden you're like, okay, I found my real people. I'm going to grow as a human being. I so love that, and Diane, that you changed your tea because I, I say this all the time. It's not an everyday tea. We serve different blends and flavors on how we feel. And I'm glad that you took the time. And I'm glad that you like doing this little experiment. And because my grandma gave it to me, right? Words, words tell stories and stories change lives. And, you know, interaction. It's again, association, who you associate with. Who do you want at your table? And mm -hmm. I love having you as a guest because we always have this good conversation about tea, right? And old memories and history and stuff like that. And it goes right back to all of your words that you gave me to begin with. The time, the entertaining, the awareness. With the tea that you just gave me tonight, you know, with the tolerance and effort and association, it all goes together. Like, it just makes a beautiful story. Like, it makes a beautiful time together. Uh, thank you. You know, you're absolutely right. Yes. Um, entertaining is putting forth effort too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you started at the age of 10, yeah. you know, entertaining. So there was a lot of effort put in. You were a little girl, like, you know, and the singing nuns, I, 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 I've heard of it, but I've never seen it or watched it. So you can go on YouTube and you can actually see the original singing nuns performing. And uh, it's a hoot. I thought they were wonderful. Um, and they raised a lot of money to help people, again, which is a guiding light, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the work you do for humanity. Because you're a huge humanitarian like I am. But what what have you done? Uh, what what organizations have you worked with and all of that good stuff, Diane? So I've worked with a variety of organizations depending on where I've lived. Um, Free the Children is actually out of Canada. Congratulations. Oh. Uh, and they have this fabulous organization where they help people in Kenya. And uh, it was a real honor to go and help build a library out there with a group of people. And then um, in Uganda, um, the Queen Sylvia has a fantastic foundation where she helps the schools and, and communities and has actually, I was really amazed when the first things I learned about Queen Sylvia, um, she's in Uganda, Uganda, is um, when she became queen, um, the disease was really, really um, heavy uh, with AIDS. And through education, it is down to where there's only like 1% of people with AIDS. Oh, Shocking, right? She's done yeah. such a fabulous job. She, The people love her. They love her husband. And um, it was a true honor to do work with her. So I did that for a couple of years because it was easy living in Dubai because it's Africa's a lot cheaper to get to from <laughs> Dubai than it is from the United States. But here in America, my husband and I do a lot of things, mainly through our church. When they say they need help with different things, um, we try to be there and uh, and help wherever we can. 
So, but you know, I started helping when I was a little girl. Um, before there was what we have black, brown Santa and blue Santa and all that. Um, before that existed, um, I mean, I grew up in a family where you always had to save a little bit of your allowance and give it for the poor or save it so you could buy something at Christmas time. And so I remember with my friend, Connie Ann, she and I went and collected old toys and then we cleaned them all up and got them all pretty, the dollies and everything. And, um, got them all ready so kids who didn't have anything could um, have something for Christmas. So it's just always been a part of me. And what I really like, Diane, is because the message of humanity, right, is it's very simple. You know, help your neighbors, help somebody in need. You know, you don't need a big title. You don't need a big label. Just go out and do the little things. It's like when you were little, saving mm -hmm. your allowance and getting a gift for somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's how we make a better world, by just sharing and caring for everybody. Absolutely. And and I've carried that through as a parent. Um, we have a store that's called Walgreens. And um, Walgreens, they pharmacy, they put all their little Christmas stuff on sale the last week of Christmas and um, or right before Christmas. And I give my kiddos X amount of money and we go to Walgreens and they can get whatever they want. And I tell them that where I've found a good place to go um, and spoken to the manager at like a trailer park or something. And, get, and give hints, and then we um, wrap it all up and uh, deliver it with the help of the managers at different trailer parks. And and that, and so now some of my, my kids are doing the same thing, delivering turkeys and delivering toys. So I think when we can teach our loved ones to start sharing and loving and caring that we're teaching them more about life than just receiving. Oh, and I think it's a deep, important message, right? And it's being passed down from generation to generation. So they have that memory as well, right? Where'd you learn that from? Oh, I learned it from my grandma. I learned it from my mom. I learned it from my aunt, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, right, and then it brings more stories to the table. Uh, so, so Diane, I wanna ask you, do you have a favorite memory growing up that stands out to you the most? Oh my gosh. How can I share what so many beautiful memories and it depends on which person, but I'll say in honor of my mama, I will say having her come home after a hard night of working in the ER and with blood all over her, those, they had to wear lab coats, you know, in those days. And, uh, she'd leave the lab coat outside and all her shoes because she'd never want to bring those germs inside. And then she still made time to read to us and, uh, and get up in the morning and have in the wintertime, especially I was going to say, and have warm oatmeal ready for us and a smile on her face after doing a huge um, uh, shift. And, and that just really inspired me that, you know, you, you can work hard and still put a smile on your face for your kiddos and let them know that they're loved. And that's, that's a, a really good gift from a mom, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I asked that was because, you know, sometimes we talk about today so much today, right? So much presence today, but it was the little things when we were growing up that we bring to take to the table today. Uh, you know, and having that memory stick with you and say, you know what, I appreciate life a little bit more because of that memory. Mm -hmm. No, you're absolutely right. And um, I'm hoping that I'm creating memories for my uh, grandson. I'm in charge of making his birthday cakes every year and it's registered with him. Um, he's turning four and it's like, Grandma, that was a great Spider-Man cake you made me last year, but this year it's going to be an astronaut cake. And by the way, and then he tells me all the way up to he's seven years old, what each cake's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, and, and that's a special memory together. Like he knows that grandma's the one that's making the cake and then he has a story to tell behind it. Like, yeah. I cannot. That, that is cool. I always love how the little ones come out with and surprise you, right? You think and they're watching this or they're reading this and you're thinking, okay, well, that's what they like. And then all of a sudden they come and they change the whole storyline. And you're like, that's not, that's not what I want. I want this. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, my granddaughter's three and, and going to be four in March. And some of the things she says to me, too, surprises me. Because I think she likes this, but you know, she likes this now. So yeah. uh, we're, we're watching this new show called Ru Ru Ruth and Ruby, where it's a grandma and, uh, and granddaughters that are doing skits and teaching you how to treat people and, and in school and classrooms and all that. It's pretty cool. Oh, uh, I wouldn't have thought she would have liked it at the age of three, but... She likes it, and I and I kind of get a kick out of it because there's a grandma in there, and then there's two granddaughters, and they're doing all these little mini skits in there. Oh, that's awesome! I have to look for this. It's really cool. So yeah. my, I have to tell you one fun story. Um, so my grandson, we were my husband and I were watching him, and we were like, oh, "Do we have to watch Spider Man one more time?" So, you know, I love YouTube because you get anything on YouTube. So I put on Lassie, the old black and white Lassie. I don't know if you remember Lassie. Yeah, yeah. So he got so excited. He's like, he jumps up and he goes, that's a real person. And they look like me. <laughs> and after watching, we had him for a whole week. And after watching Lassie, he'd always want more. And before I knew it, he was like, go, Lassie, go. You can do it, Lassie. Wow. Bringing those old stories back, eh, is really incredible too. We, you yeah. know, and they see the difference in the movies and the films and all of that. Uh, my dad used to make me watch the black and white uh, Blondie and Dagwood. And uh, he would wake me up in the middle of the night. I'd have school in the morning and it was on like three o'clock in the morning. He would wake me up just to watch it. And then he'd say, okay, go back to bed. You got school in the morning. And I'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, that is so funny. Oh, for those. Um, so some of my brothers and I, and now my, my husband and I got him hooked. We're watching, we we message each other. Did you watch that one? And we're watching the old shows from when we were little. And one of them is My Three Sons. Did y'all get that up there? Oh, that sounds familiar. It's because you're a lot younger, but it's worth seeing again on uh, YouTube and on Prime actually has picked it up because it's so popular. But it's a lovely way to see how life was, too, in the 1960s. And it ran for 12 years, so it goes all the way to the 70s. So you really you really see this change happening in time and people thinking and their thoughts and so forth. And so it's a great way to, to show kids how, yeah, you had to get up to turn on the change the channel. You were the yeah. remote control. <laughs> There was only three channels or you put an SOS pad on the end of the rabbit ears. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was move it and move it this way. Uh, or the yeah. big, big satellites that were outside and you had to go out and actually, and then they'd be banging on the window. Yeah, no, no, leave it there. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. I'm sure nobody knows what we're talking about. <laughs> well, my, my listeners are the older generation. So they're going to be like, oh, good memories, good memories. Yeah. Uh, good memories. So, Diane, did you ever watch the, the series of Tammy's in Love? Uh, <gasps> with yes. Because of musical, I just thought that that would be something you would watch, right? The Tammy series. Uh, for all my listeners out there, you're probably saying, oh my goodness, where did Miss Liz get this? Like, <laughs> I love the Tammy series and and uh, Gidget. I loved Gidget. Oh, yes. <laughs> the, the movies, Gidget, right? So, yeah. And you know, it's so weird. You'd think having five brothers, I would know everything about dating and stuff. But I, these movies are so innocent. Uh, that I loved them and, and I loved the Doris Day movies. And so I got tips from Doris Day on how to date. Okay, you don't you don't kiss a guy to the third date because you wouldn't want him to think you're a hussy. <laughs> 
I could just see you listening to Tammy, this series of Tammy. And they yeah. were so clean back then. You know, they would talk oh, about yeah. relationships and stuff like that, heartbreak and that. But mm -hmm. it was in a clean fashion. Yes. It, and know? the thing is that our minds, we can picture things. We don't need to actually see it all. <laughs> right? Less <laughs> is more. Less is more. Oh, man. Very well stated. <laughs> So, Diane, I want to get into, uh, you do a, a, a UK news and culture show for U.S. global TV and radio. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So, I've been with them for like four years. Um, I've had three different shows, but I needed to move down to one so I could have some more time for writing. But the UK news and culture is fabulous. We, um, Dr. Jacqueline and I, she's the founder um, and I are with two other people, um, Helen Ashard and Simon McDonald. Simon is from Scotland and he fills us in on all the news of Scotland as well as he gives us a, a 15 minute overview of somebody exciting in history uh, in Scotland. And then Helen Ashard, who's been taking pictures of the Royals for eons um, and gives us really great updates and sometimes we get pictures of the royals before they're on the major news channels too so that's that's pretty cool too and uh and ian um is another person who actually started with a show and now he comes back as a a, a guest on the show because he has i think over a billion followers on his um, political news show as well as a, a royal show in london and so, and he's been taking pictures of the Royals since the seventies. So I'm learning a lot from them, but it's a wonderful way to bridge um, the gap and show unity between the United States and America, because we both need each other. So I, I, I love it completely. So when, when, when do you do that show? We do it on Wednesdays at 11 o'clock Eastern time. 10 o'clock central. So I want to get into the story garden because I believe that's your YouTube channel, correct? Correct. And uh, thank you for asking about it. It's uh, I took a time off um, for a couple of years because really the loss of my mother was just really devastating. And then we had uh, COVID and it was just one thing after another of losing people, but I'm starting it back up and um in January, most likely. And the purpose of the story garden is to give authors who you may not have ever heard of, I want to give them an opportunity for free to be interviewed, to share about their book, or even read the book if they want, and help them get their name and their book out there. Because there's a lot of great stories out there. And, uh, and I and I just want them shared. And, I, and I'm such a believer that if God's blessed you, you need to turn around and help somebody and bless them too. So that's my story garden. It's a safe oh, yeah. place for kids. I know that you were doing some work where you were reading stories for a while. Was that part of the story garden? Yes, I also read uh, stories um, uh, myself. And um, uh, some parents asked me to start reading things for the middle school kids too. And I started reading some books and then I realized I have to get a permission to read some of these books. <laughs> so um, I'm going after books now that are no longer published, but they're great books and, um, and, and reintroducing a lot of fun um, books to kiddos in the story garden. So it's not just there's the, the young preschoolers and then there's the um, middle school kids. So, and, and Diane, you also go into the schools and speak, right? Yes, that's true. Whenever I can, um, I'm an invited speaker to um, to do two things. One, I might come in and sign books and be at their um, book launches or their book parties that they have. But I also, I love coming and speaking to the teachers and inspiring them in the classroom because um, teaching is one of the most important jobs on earth and you you can get so depressed as a teacher these days. I don't think I have what it takes to be in the classroom to put up with a lot of stuff that they put up with today. And uh, I just want the best teachers to stay 
and be inspired to know that they're loved. It, it is so true, right? Today's, uh, I, I, I give a lot of appreciation to teachers because they do put up with a lot of different, uh, it's not like it was 20 years ago. There's so much uh, disrespect towards teachers, uh, uh, you know, and the curriculum like for teaching classes have all been mixed or shortened. Uh, you know, they, they expect you to do more with less time and, um, yeah, and so nice, right? Right. Yeah. Though I give a, a big respect to teachers because teachers do it for, for the heart. Uh, you know, they don't make a lot of money and they put up with a lot of stuff. So a lot of stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. And uh, but you're so on the money when it comes to uh, respect, because when I was growing up, you never disrespected a, a teacher. But today, parents disrespect, so the kids think they can be disrespectful. Right. But at the same time, I'll hear teachers cussing at the students, and that's not respectful either. So it goes both ways. Yeah. Again, it goes back to what we were, you know, what we were talking about earlier. If you um, start cussing and everything, because I don't believe in cussing that um, you end up bringing darkness within your own classroom. So what can you do as a teacher? Um, even when the kid is like the hardest person to teach in the world, you have to figure out, okay, how can I bring light into that child? That's your job as a teacher, to bring light and uh, encouragement because it's those hardest kids that need you the most. Yeah. I'm really passionate about that. <laughs> Well, I think, I think society has really changed the educational system, right? Like you said, like teachers are cussing and students are cussing. I think a lot of people are just tired. You know, society is just tired of so many changes, so many ways of doing things. You know, when we, for centuries, we, we've been doing education one way and then being told, okay, now we got to do it this way. And we start removing things, right? Um, I noticed a lot of change in the school systems when we took the Lord's Prayer out. Of, of the schools and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, that, mo that moment of grace, that moment of gratitude for the morning to get the classroom started, right? Mm -hmm. No, um, you're absolutely right. And, and I will say that living overseas and seeing schools in various countries is, is a real eye opener. But I will say that I've always taught in private school. So we could have that moment of coming together and building ourselves as a family within the classroom. Yeah. But a lot of schools overseas, you come dressed to learn. That's what I always call it. You might be in uniform, but you're dressed to learn. You're clean, you're cut, you're, you're red, you're there to learn. And they know they're there to learn and bullying and everything might take place, but it is crushed like that because it will not be tolerated. And so there's a lot to be said about how in America anyway, we need to look at some of these schools that are thriving overseas yeah. and maybe bring some of these guidelines back into our own country. A big thing that's going on right now, you know, is to bring back the Ten Commandments. But I always say, if you just put the golden rule in your classroom, that covers everybody. It doesn't hurt anyone's feeling because all religions have to love one another, right? And to be kind, the golden rule is powerful. And I think that um, if kids look up and they see the golden rule and they read it and they were having a bad thought, <laughs> that that almost helps to erase those bad thoughts. Yeah. So that's my take well, on it. Well, it goes right back to uh, the word that you gave me to describe yourself was the word kind. You just said kind. So yeah. what does kind mean to you, Diane? Kindness. That's an excellent question. I never thought about it as far as me in general. I think it's to have a big heart, to be full of love, to be willing to listen. And a lot of times we don't listen. And I think that's one of the most important L words is to listen before you react because if you really listen to the person then you might make an effort to think differently and to be a little bit kinder and, and it goes, I, go ahead i'm sorry and it goes right back to your teeth right 
the yeah, effort, <laughs> the kindness with the effort, you that's, know, that's right. It absolutely. And, and that's what I mean. Like the T works with storytelling, right? And mm -hmm. it's discovering on how we tell the stories and how we write the stories and share the stories. And tonight we're sharing stories on three words, you know, uh, but tonight we're doing a double dipper. We're doing six words because <laughs> I, I really feel like your two T's actually pour in together and make a stronger T, you know, because tolerance takes time. You know, effort is entertaining. It can be, you know, and entertaining is not a negative word. It's a positive word, right? Because we entertain to engage with the association to bring the awareness. You see how it all boom, boom, boom. It Amazing. Also, Thank you. Sounds like a great girl, Gray. <laughs> right? And that, and, and that's just like having a tea party. The, you're just pouring the tea, but it's blending all together. And mm -hmm. that's what your words have done they've blended together and made a really good strong cup of tea tonight um so i want to get into your favorite color because your favorite color is blue um mm -hmm. so why blue diane i've always loved blue i think it's calm i love looking at the sky ever since i was a little girl i would sit on the back porch with my little white cat angel and look at the puffy clouds and Try to think about what those clouds look like and if the puffy clouds weren't there then the sky was this clear blue and i thought it was the way that led you into heaven and so blue is just beautiful well and i could tell with your voice your voice got really calm <laughs> as you're talking about blue <laughs> And that's what I love when you read when when you read children's books. I love the voice and the expressions that you put in when you read the words, right? Because your voice changes, and I love listening to you when you read the children's books because I find that I'm calm, and I'm just like, where's she going with the next page? Like you bring that engagement in there, like you bring that that what what's once the page is turned, who's coming next, right? Like, yeah. I, I love I, like that. I love making the words jump off the page you know i really do so diane do you have any uh new books that will be coming out this year next year or any upcoming events that you'd like to share um you know i forgot to i had this new publisher and i'm very excited we're gonna have a i can't tell you the title yet because i didn't get permission but um uh i'll make sure you know about it in case you want okay. to just with it but it's so exciting, and I will give you a hint. It's about a camel. Oh! <laughs> and Alice the camel has one hump. I can't <laughs> keep a <jerk. laughs> And it's not hairy. It's a new oh. camel. So I have that coming out. And then we'll be making a big announcement about Boomer and, uh, and the series, and that should be in about one more week. So that's very exciting. In the meantime, I've been writing like crazy some more stories and no telling where they will go. So, Diane, are you going to turn any of your books into a musical? Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> I think it would. I, I think Ruby Takes Chicago should be a musical. I do, too, actually. <laughs> I think I, I would go to Chicago just to watch it. Oh, you're so sweet. Uh, that it really, it really would be inspiring for a lot of young people to see, and fun too because of the twenties. The twenties are an exciting time. But um, anyway, yeah, that would be fun. And uh, yeah, so I'm like writing like crazy, and I'm taking some classes actually on AI. I want to understand AI. So uh, perplexity and I are becoming really good friends. Oh, wow. I would have never pictured you taking classes on AI. Yeah. Well, I was one of the first teachers to bring technology in the classroom. So you just didn't know that. But yeah, I'm really big into wanting to know where the world's going. And I want to be cemented in, in the world. And uh, anyway, my AI, do you want to know its name? Absolutely. So I gave my AI a name. And his name is Frank, because I want him to be Frank about what he thinks about my thoughts. <laughs> well, I like that. I like Frank. <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have to introduce me to Frank. <laughs> I shall. <laughs> and I bet you you end up with your own AI. 
and, another, and, a new, and a new name too for your AI. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I may be superlicious, califragilistic or something. Like, <laughs> really make them work hard. <laughs> so, I love it. <laughs> so, Diane, do you want to show your uh, website and spell it out for all the audio listeners for me, please? Sure, I'll be happy to. So, um, yes, yeah, so it's D for Diane. D-I-A-N-N-F-L-O-Y-D-B-O-E-H-M.com. Diane Floyd Bame.com. Though it looks like Boheme, it's Bame. Diane Floyd Bame.com. Floyd is my maiden name, and I promised my daddy I would use it. Oh, well, I love it. And I love this tea time together. I always have fun with you. Uh, thank you again for joining me on tea time. And for anybody that would like to know more on the incredible tea times that we've had together, check out the YouTube channel because she was on season three, season four and season five. So check the playlist because Miss Liz has different playlists for different seasons. Check that out. And I will see everybody back here with september's guests that's right we're already in september of this year i can't believe it but september's guests and we will start all over again and serve new cups of teas out there and get some words and some real life stories out there and we'll change the world one story one tea and one word at a time until then i want to wish you guys all a beautiful weekend and take time for family and take time for tea and keep serving to make a better world